Hola y bienvenido en mi canal. <laughs> I'm sorry for the long hiatus, uh, but I have filmed a lot of material, so I will make more videos in the coming weeks. And today is another part uh, of the make of my lathe, my mini lathe uh, uh, made. So let's see. <laughs> Before going through the process of making and installing the cross slide, the carriage sled need to be fitted with some further parts and holes. First, a couple of small 2mm holes are carefully made going all the way through from the top of the sled to the bottom of the top jib to create a channel for the injection of oil. The holes are small and deep, so the job needs to be carried out with care that's why I don't two couples of eyeglasses. As you can see here, the holes go through the sled. On top, the holes are enlarged up to 10 mm in diameter. Because the top part of these holes uh, need to be deep almost as much as the thickness of the material, and the drill bit has a under 35 degrees angle at the tip, with this end mill, the bottom of the holes is made flat, making room to host the ball oilers. After having cleaned up very well the holes, the ball oilers are installed. This required to be pressed inside the hole, so I used a nylon hammer to force them inside. An alternative tool is an intermediate aluminum mallet that is in turn hit with a classic steel hammer. Here I am engraving a channel on the top jibs to let the oil go along the whole jib. Why I didn't film it, I've repeated this task with another set of jibs made with brass, while lubricated steel on steel is an acceptable compromise in terms of coefficient of friction and having roughly the same static versus dynamic friction, they are not subject to the stick-slip effect. I, however, eventually choose to trade off the risk of wearing out the slide ways with a less optimal static versus dynamic coefficient of friction ratio using a softer material such as brass. Brass and steel have a higher ratio between static versus dynamic coefficient of friction, as you can see in this table, making it more prone to the stick slip effect. So, what is this uh, stick slip effect? When a body slips uh, on another body, uh, they experience friction. Static friction opposes the force required to move the bodies when they are stationary while dynamic friction opposes the force required to keep the motion while the bodies are in relative motion. When static friction is greater than dynamic friction, at first we need a larger force to move the bodies. However, when the bodies start to move, the friction drops suddenly. To control the speed, the force must be reduced, but this causes a rise in friction, which in turn requires more force to overcome it, and so forth. This is natural, the stick-slip effect, and usually it's the cause of oscillations, even when the motion is electronically controlled, because the PID is typically tuned on just one source of instability. If you are interested in this topic, let me know in the comment section below. For the stick slip effect, see also the link in the description. So I replaced steel with brass, but while a softer material means that it will wear out first, it also means that if hard dust such as, you know, shavings from the workpiece go between the jib and the slideway, that hard dust could be embedded into the brass, making it a perfect abrasive. So, the exact opposite of using brass as a sacrificial material. <laughs> um, so, to avoid this problem, I've made these flanges that will hold a slide whip wiper on each side of the carriage sled. And uh, these tapped holes made on the side of the sleds uh, have the purpose to hold such a wiper. On the front sled of the two that will form the carriage, uh, these 8mm tapped holes have the function to hold the apron. 
that in this lathe would be different than the typical apron you are used to find in a lathe and you will discover why in a future video. Well, it's time to prepare those parts that will form the cross slide and that must be flat. Before going through the fine job of scraping, I found useful roughing the part, lapping it on a granite surface, which indeed is really flat. So some some paper is attached by the means of this thin but really powerful double-sided tape, carefully attached to prevent any void. The attentive spectator might notice that I move the piece back and forward instead of figure 8 motion as prescribed in these cases to spread out the effect of the irregular pressure exerted by hand. While I didn't show the several times I turned the piece and some figure 8 motion that I actually performed, in this case, because I just have this long and narrow workpiece, such a regular pressure have less effect over the long axis. It's almost okay. While rubbing the part is strenuous. You know, I even had a muscle strain that blocked me for more than 15 days after this job. It is why faster to reach the final required flatness than starting directly with a scraper. Indeed, the final stage is quicker and requires just a little work, as you can see here. This is the piece, just after lapping it. Not bad, after all. The last operation is to prepare the carriage for some measurements before going through the actual installation. So I prepared this separator that will lay between the two slats. I've made it as parallel as possible, checking it with a micrometer, and made rough on the surfaces to help the adhesive have a grip on it. As you will see on the next episodes, the adhesive is used as an auxiliary link. The separator fit perfectly, allowing a small gap to reduce constraints between the two slats. The gap is really small, maximum 0.02 mm. Maybe I will relax it a little bit. Then this plate is made to hold the two slats together. And of course, I mistaken the measurements. The Thanks to this jig I realized that I had a problem about how to measure and have the cross slide squared with the ways. In the last short video I posed some questions about the alignment of the cross slide. Thanks to all you guys that commented giving suggestions. Uh, finally I found what I think is the best way to perform that task. But uh, this is matter for the next video, so stay tuned for the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this video, if so please hit the thumb up icon as your feedback is really helpful. As always your comments are welcome and sometimes I might use your input as a response in the next videos, preserving your anonymity of course. Also, I'm not able to upload videos at regular pace, so if you are interested in the content I make, consider to subscribe and click the bell icon to let YouTube tell you when a new video is available. For today, that's all. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.